Welcome to What the Flick. We're back with more of Turn. We're up to episode two. Alonzo Duraldi, William Bibiani. Uh, who by fire? And, um, okay. Are you starting to regret doing this on an episodic <laughs> oh, basis already? I'm, you know, I'm not giving up on this show just uh, yet. I'm not but. giving up on it either. As we talked about in the last episode, uh, you know, the first couple episodes on the show are often where it finds its footing. Sure. And I will say that, um, whereas in the first episode, I was really frustrated by um, how ham-fisted a lot of its setups were in terms of trying to push characters into place, desperately trying to motivate them as quickly as possible to get into position to do some actual spying. Um, here, the the... In the second episode, the narrative flow is much more interesting. There's a much more direct. And they were throwing so much at the wall trying to see what stuck mm -hmm. in the first episode that here, the fact that it's basically just a murder mystery right. was actually kind of refreshing. We got to bring some characters actually into the fold. Angus McFadden is now in Sea uh, Talkit, if only for one episode, you know, and he's and you get to see more lying, more subterfuge. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the you know they're they're sort of upping the ante on on Woody being a spy in terms of now having to basically be a double agent, not by choice, you mm -hmm. know. He is now going to be uh, McFadden's guy in Satake, while at the same time yeah. he's also, unbeknownst to his father and to the other loyalists, you know, spying for the... For the Woody, you mean the, Abraham? Abraham, yeah, sorry. Yeah. They, he was okay. called Woody once in the first episode. Yeah. Uh, Abraham, so, uh, you know, so that was interesting, that, I thought. That, that, That's, and it, it's much cleaner now. One of my issues with the last episode was they weren't as clear about what's important and what's not, sure. what has consequences and what doesn't. And here yeah. it's it's much more focused. We're able to to really, really get into that. Yeah, but it, it was interesting that in trying to clear Anna of the murder, he mm -hmm. only dug himself in more deeply into this whole ongoing and you know, conflict. Sort of, and that's the sort of thing that started interesting me because I like stories where the guy is just screwed. Yeah. It's really good drama. It's it, it works in I mean it works in Hannibal, it works in sure. Breaking Bad, it works shield all the time, just seeing someone try to get out of a mess. And they just dig they themselves, themselves into more of a, a conundrum. Always, yeah. always fun. But there's just, this show just has so many fundamental problems in terms of, I mean, even just the, we, we talked about the way it looked. It looks too clean. It looks like, you're, you you said it last week, you said it looks like a, like a. The tour of Colonial Williamsburg. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it, it <laughs> looks like something you should be visiting. Like, oh, isn't this fun? I watch those, like, no, everything should be kind of gross. And But the other thing that frustrates me about this is they're really glossing over a lot of history that that just we don't want Abraham has slaves he has he has he has black people living on his on his cabbage plantation Art, with, where he calls them out when there's a fire they show him the they maggot the right. cabbage in the first episode oh, okay I because I when he called the people out during the fire last night I thought those were white guys that they, came were, they out. were not that was were those were some 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 ah, black gentlemen well, right there but again and like we just I don't I don't want to see him go full fast bender or anything like no, that but no, like no. we're really glossing over it. and then by the end of the episode when they're touching upon something else right. it seems just as weird and but again though I think with the slave thing you know you complained about them throwing too many things at the wall maybe that's just sort of maybe that's something that like in episode five or six, he has to sort of deal with those consequences and maybe his own, he may have some moral dilemma about I that think, or I something. think my concern is that they're whitewashing or oversimplifying some things right now, mm -hmm. and it's making the entire show seem really simplistic and mm. almost the cute version of what we could <laughs> be seeing. I mean, look at Byrne Gorman. Byrne Gorman's a great actor. I loved him on Torchwood. Uh -huh. um, and he is stuck now playing British cliches. He was a grotesque British cliche in Pacific Rim, mm. and now he's the disappearing, yes, hmm. yes, what I I'm sure I'm going to have you to dinner tonight after all. But I do like the notion of the 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 uh, even the Continental Army officers mm -hmm. putting noblesse oblige above uh, 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 the the actual conflict in terms of when they discover that yes. that that Sk uh, Captain uh, Sk Simcoe. Simcoe is being tortured. Like oh yeah. the horror! Let us, let us take you down immediately. You know. Yeah. Um, and, and so that you know that would, I thought that was kind of a cool twist. And I have to say. You know, uh, I love when uh, when you drag in a gay character just so that a hidden love letter can have more suspects attached oh, to it. No, it was, <laughs> I don't know, like there, there was that, but it felt so cheap. Like for me, at the end of this, especially like once he like gets in, like okay, so there was a love letter. The person who wrote the love letter probably killed this this captain. Fine, cool. Or, Got or, it? or well, the first thing I thought the husband of the person who wrote the love or letter. Or the husband of it. Or yeah. like it was the entire love letter was a code, and then it was he was secretly meeting with some spy. Right. Tons of ways you could have gone with it. You decided to go with a love that dare not speak its name. 
time, which was, yeah, a big deal. He could be killed just for that exactly, at the time, yeah. which is a big deal. But at the same time, it felt cheap to me the way that really? they handled it. When he showed up, and like, I don't know, his motivation was so was so limited when he finally said, like, you know, well, why? Why did you do this? It was like, I'm very gay. Like, I just, there was, <laughs> I, 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 I'm watching, I'm like, that's it? Like, he wasn't, they didn't even really clarify, like, I can't do, he said, I can't do this anymore. And if you would say anything, I'll kill you. Like, there were so many ways you could have really dramatized that. And instead, it just felt like a kind of a cheap uh, way to in, infuse. I don't know. It's almost like, remember when people were shocked by Deadwood because cowboys swore? Mm. It's like, I almost feel like that's what they're doing. Like, there were gay people in the American Revolution? <laughs> yes. Yes, there were gay people Friedrich in the American Revolution. Wilhelm von Steuben. Look it up. He was like a <laughs> major hero of the conflict. Yeah. Yeah, we no. won the war thanks to a gay German. I'm not making this up. Yeah. Uh, no, you're right. They, it wasn't. It, it could have been handled better. But I at least like the fact that that the movie, that the show, isn't coddling the the notion that that yeah, he's now completely right. has no power at all, and he can be completely he can be used by them and then mm. discarded by them because like he's a got gay no person. He's, like they flat he's, out say, like he, now that I've met a gay person, I know what my own situation yeah, is like. He's got no, kind of, yeah, he's got, he's he's got no legal standing at least. They're not mm. they're not whitewashing that aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. But yeah, I, the, again, I think this is a show. It's it's mm. it's early. I'm not I'm not I'm not turning my back and on again, it. The pace of it's getting so much better it's getting more focused yeah. I'm waiting to see when JJ Fields character he's sort of like the leader of the British CIA or whatever they want to call right, it right the one who's, yeah. who beds the actress yeah in this and episode. by the way this is before like I guess pillow talk had been invented and like sort of frowned upon <laughs> for agents because she's like he beds this actress and she's like oh yes you're so attractive how many troops do you have I, exactly. where are you location <laughs> where are you shipping out and I realized the whole twist was he's recruiting her but at the same time yeah I thought I thought that she was maybe already and then like, he's gonna like stab him at the end. Yeah, or something. Or it was sort of like, could you talk into the <laughs> powder into the puff box? Yeah, you know. <laughs> but yeah, and, and that's, yeah. And there's something. There's even something weird about like the credits in this movie, in this movie, in this TV show, because it's all like this sort of flash animated, you know, oh, silhouetted. The opening, credits, the opening, yeah, yeah, yeah. opening credits. There's some stuff in there that I'm like, are we gonna get to that? Like, there's like a submarine in it. <laughs> there's like an egg shaped submarine in this opening credits, and they're just like, ooh, whoa, spying in this little submarine. I'm like, I, really? I, I can't wait for that episode. That episode's going to be cool. <laughs> this episode needs like a Briscoe County Jr. type si like scientist. Steampunk and yeah, someone, sort like, of. How cool would that be if it took like this huge <laughs> shift in season two and it became just really fun and crazy oh, and wacky man. and steampunk? Well, I mean, again, this is the, these are people that existed. This is based on a book about actually. But that only gets you so no, far. No, no, no. Though. I'm not saying that as an excuse or anything. Okay. I'm just saying I think they can't get too wacky with this. But mm. um, I am holding out hope. You know, I, I like mm -hmm. a lot of these actors, and uh, I'm, I'm fascinated with the period. Mm -hmm. um, it's not firing on all cylinders yet, but it's we're only two episodes in. We're only two episodes in, and at the very least, the second episode is definitely an improvement on the first, there and that's that. a good thing. Yes. I'm, I'm going to stick with it a little bit longer because, again, I like the premise. But ultimately, if I become convinced they're not doing anything with the premise, I, you're you're doing this series alone. <laughs> Fine. All right, I'm done. Like I, I can only give them so much. So I can only give them so much slack. Well. So, I, they need to start. They need to start. They need to start giving me a reason why this exists other than American Revolution spies. Well, I think Simcoe is turning into a really good villain, as is Richard uh, the Angus McFadden, McFadden character. Yeah. yeah, I like him uh, a lot. He's fun in this episode. Yeah, and, yeah. and I mean, yes, Burn Gorman is, is turning into more of a foil than a, than a bad guy. Mm -hmm. But he's, you know, who was it in Hogan's Heroes? He's turning into Colonel oh, Clank. Oh, Colonel Clank. <laughs> he's turning into Colonel Clank. Yeah. You know, Diamonds is, is all these spies, <laughs> and they've got they've got sub submarines. How can we stop these? The egg shaped submarine. <laughs> so yeah, who knows? But who knows? Uh, we're so gonna iffy on iffy on turn so far, but we're gonna we're gonna stick with it. Yeah, and it, so if, if Bibbs disappears, you'll know why. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <He killed me. laughs>